but you could put in the center of these cones mercury. Um, and the mercury could actually start to twirl. And the interesting thing about the mercury is that's sort of the same idea as the um, with the Vedas and the Vimana aircraft, and that they had a copper cauldron with mercury in it, and they'd have iron poles around the cauldron, and they'd spin it. So um, basically, I got my iron poles, my magnets, and my cauldron, even though it sort of looks like copper, it's not supposed to be copper. Um, it'd have to be a dielectric if this is going to be aluminum on the outside and have mercury on the inside. Um, while the outside of this would all be water, um, which would get pushed up through the center hole and go back down on the outside. This one. There you go. There's the sort of like the inside. It would be sort of closed off like that. And so the wire would just fluctuate going around it like so. Sort of makes you think the idea, though, if this should be a curved, uh, logarithmic um, curve instead of this fine uh, uh, cone, basically. But people have been using cones, and this is a phi cone. So the um, height from the um, bottom to the top, height-wise, is 1.618 compared to the diameter, which is 1. Um, and uh, the idea is... Um, with the charge constantly um, changing um, as this charges up the the bottom uh, node charges up electrically uh, with a negative charge uh, you'd have a changing current as it's building up charge it'd slow down and then it'd re release a huge amount of current and then start charging up again and so you have a fluctuating direct current and so the idea is to use a resonant transformer with the center coil and the way to test this out to get the same wavelength is I'd basically have to keep trying different size metal rings um, and basically make these big cones unless I could get a nice good ratio the ratio of the sphere um, the diameter of the sphere to the diameter of the toroid is 1.618 I just naturally thought that might work so um, depending on how many twists this has um, uh, you might have to put like a metal ring on this cone and that would be your positive terminal and you have to adjust the wavelength so it would couple with the rotating coil um, that's something I could really use someone's help with in figuring out capacitance and everything to get those to actually couple effectively but that's my main notion um, that I'm going to try it's just adjusting that ring to get the uh, the right couple coupling and uh, so you'd have a changing field in this coil with direct current being run in and the idea is this would start spinning in the water um, and basically all the diamagnetic forces within the toroid and the water and the cone um, with the magnetic field is going to create all this repulsion um, and things are going to start moving and the hopeful idea is that uh, this coil is going to pulse electricity back into into the capacitor and so when it discharges the idea is to figure out how to get um, a draw of energy out it'll definitely generate an anti-gravitational field but we gotta keep it um, keep it moving um, and so that's the idea is the inductance of the coil having a kickback and charging up the capacitors themselves um, the other notion uh, there was one more thing. Oh, aluminum. Because we're using aluminum, you can anodize it. And there's a really cool way to do it. The traditional ways with sulfuric acid and running a s small current through it, and but using at least 200 volts and using a, ba a diluted basic solution, usually with potassium hydroxide. And you'd put, say, like the rodent coil in it, or these two cones, and you put it in the solution, and you jump a, um, you put 200 volts through it, and the outside of the aluminum will be coated with a layer of alumina. If you're already aware of this, alumina, aluminum exposed air, get the microscopic thin layer of alumina on it already. Alumina is corundum, um, or it's the amorphous crystalline forming form of alumina. Corundum is a specific crystalline form of alumina, which is two parts aluminum, three parts oxygen. That's all alumina. It's just a different crystalline structure. And corundum is what you get sapphi sapphire or rubies out of. Um, sapphire is usually titanium, iron, impurities, cr uh, ruby with chromium. Um, and so I was really interested in sapphires. Um, 
and you could put a little sapphire here in the center. I was originally thinking quartz crystal is using as a dielectric and insulator, but being we're using aluminum, um, there's this natural thing with corundum, and so you could put a sapphire crystal here in the center, even though these are technically touching, even though it doesn't look like it, but the wires would all then become insulated with the dielectric, and the dielectric, um, if it's perpendicular, to the, or if it's parallel to the c-axis, the usual central axis of the crystal, it's like 11.3. Um, and if it's perpendicular, it's 9.5 compared to a quartz, which is 4.1. That's the dielectric constant, or K. Um, while water is like 80. It's huge. Um, mercury is really, really low. It's like 1.006. And one's the vacuum. Uh, um, and so what the dielectric constant responds to is basically how much charge um, the dielectric, the material, can hold before there's a dielectric breakdown, where the voltage will break down the insulator and surge through. Now, the corundum, what happens is if you run the voltage um, through this uh, basic bath, or diluted basic bath, um, and the coil or the, these cones would be the positive terminal, absorbing the energy in, and you surround it, like, surround it by like a cylinder, which would be your negative charge, and you run 200 volts through it, the corundum will grow on the outer parts of the um, aluminum in a, to a certain depth. And the way I, this process, this process right here, this is the process we're using. <laughs> okay. Um, plasma electrolytic oxidation. This is going to be really important, I think, to getting this to all work. Where they go. All right, back to Maya. So, um, and this would form a coat of corundum on the, the wires, which would insulate also from the wires. So, getting two dielectrics one is so, uh, a high K solid dielectric and a very high K liquid dielectric because it's a liquid, it's not technically um, as good as an insulator as the corundum. And so, um, technically, if you make the corundum the same thickness all the way through through the wire, um, it's not going to want to escape anywhere else, and this is the most positively charged spot. So it's not going to want to escape, go through the wire, and come back into the cone. It's going to want to come out the tip. And so the charge is going to build up before it releases, um, and you basically have like a little lightning bolt, and it'll spark, and you'll have all this energy released into the other cone. Um, now the idea is to also how to harvest this energy. Um, and, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Um, Maybe the, the spark going through and running this coil, there will be a kickback um, through this rotating coil, and you'll have a resonant transformer, and the energies are going to be conserved. Um, I, I don't know. I, I really want to test this, this concept out. Um, just work on the most basic, simple possible system. Um, but uh, the idea, though, is it will generate a vector gravitational force upwards, and the coil is going to start spinning pretty damn fast um, in the fluid. And mine's about the same density as water, so I could actually have this up and running sometime soon. Um, I've been collecting materials. i got like six microwaves at the moment. A microwave has a high voltage capacitor, a high voltage transformer, and a high voltage diode all in it, which are all very useful, and two magnets, some sort of ceramic type magnets, um, or probably ceramic ferrite magnets. And they are definitely not neodymium. But I got they're all um, donut shaped, which are all the type of magnets you want to use to make this little guy. Um, there'd be 20 magnets laying out. And uh, yeah, so there is the, the Penta motor, which I'm going to start building tonight, and hopefully we'll have some interesting experiments to show you sometime soon. However, I'm only at uh, 12 magnets, so technically I could lay out an, actually an icosahedron around it, which actually has this f um, 10. Um, points on the outside, but then there's one for the top instead of the five. So technically, I have enough magnets for icosahedrons, but not for the uh, not for um, oh, what's it called um, for the dodecahedron. But if anyone would love to buy me 20 neodymium magnets, that'd be amazing. <laughs> Just throwing that out there. Okay, well, um, yeah, I would love to hear some input back from people and see what they think about this and how we can make this guy a uh, resonant transformer. That'd be awesome. Thank you.